Postscriptum is a tactical first-person shooter set during the height of the Second World War. Much like live combat, the game demands competence and communication to survive and thrive. If you are looking to learn the basics or sharpen your skills, you have come to the right place. This is part four of a multi-part tutorial series covering every class in the game. Welcome to A Moron's Guide. Grunt, you look like a strong, capable young man. Say, you think you're strong enough to lift this weapon? They call it a Browning Automatic Rifle, or BA for short. This thing will cut a jerry in half. Oh, yeah, it looks good in your hands. I'm sure you're going to get all the broads. <clears throat> Excuse me. The MG specialization in Postscriptum is a harrowing responsibility. Armed with either a light or heavy machine gun, they can throw a wall of lead downrange faster than any other class. Because of this, an MG is vital to both offensive and defensive tactics. In this video, we will review the equipment, responsibilities, and some tips and tricks to playing the machine gun support class in Postscriptum. Reloading. Let's first review the equipment you have at your disposal and how it is best implemented. Both Allied and German machine gunners are equipped with essentially the same loadout, which are a light or heavy machine gun with four to six reloads or magazines in reserve, the bread and butter needed to suppress a whole team, a pistol sidearm, a secondary to switch to if your long reload gets interrupted, Two Fragmentation Grenades, a throwable explosive device for devastating results. As well as two white smoke grenades, deployable smoke to block the enemy's line of sight. Three field dressings for healing up to 75% of your health or patching up an injured teammate. And one morphine syringe for reviving fallen comrades or the medic who ran out into enemy fire trying to save a rifleman who gave up anyway, and a canteen with seven sips to recharge your stamina. In order to zoom while aiming down sights, you must be fresh, so drinking after lugging a heavy gun around is a must. Each faction arms their MG with different primary and secondary weapons. The British MG enters the battlefield with the Bren Mark III heavy machine gun as well as the Enfield II pistol sidearm on their hip. The French gunner sets up with either the Mac 24 machine gun or the Chaucha machine gun with no secondary weapon. The American machine gunner heads to war with either the Browning automatic rifle M1918A2 or BAR for short or the Browning M1919 heavy machine gun. They also were armed with an M1911 pistol sidearm on their hip. And the German machine gunner is issued the MG34, the MG42, the MG26T, or the FG-42, as well as the P-38 pistol sidearm as a secondary. As stated in the previous tutorials, each of these weapons have their pros and cons, and take some time to get accustomed to. If you would like some extra practice with these weapons, be sure to try out the training mode, where you can test out all of the firearms, vehicles, and mechanics of the game. Anyone who has hip-fired an MG42 already knows that each of the heavy guns and some of the light guns require stability to be effective. Luckily, all MG support primary weapons come equipped with a deployable bipod. By default, pushing C while laying prone or while crouched beside a ledge 
allows you to rest your weapon on its bipod. Using the bipod will almost eliminate the weapon's recoil, allowing you to fire more than a three round burst at an enemy position. However, while using the bipod, you will pivot around this point, limiting the range of sight you have. Hip firing an MG should only be used as a last resort or when in close quarters. Always remember to use your bipod when trying to hit anything further than 10 yards away. In addition, it is important to note that most heavy machine guns, especially the belt-fed guns, require you to be prone or have your bipod deployed to reload. Reloading! Now that we've reviewed their equipment, it's time to discuss the roles and responsibilities of the Machine Gunner class. The MG Support class is responsible for deploying the most devastating anti-infantry weapon in the squad. With that much firepower comes great responsibility. First and foremost, the MG class is not meant to be a Rambo-esque solo player, running and gunning. Due to the high recoil, and long reload time, an MG is best positioned with at least one rifleman nearby to help defend the position. This rifleman can also drop an ammunition crate for the MG refilling his ammo cache. Next, to give your squad the best chance of success, the MG is responsible for laying down cover fire on any target in need of suppression. Keeping the enemy's heads down with burst fire allows your friends to move without harassment. Yeah, right. Lastly, the MG is also responsible for selecting a smart machine gun nest and relocating once they have been discovered by the enemy. Ben, you're about to have a fucking tank on you. Copy that, I'm pulling back. As mentioned, the MG can have a game-changing impact on the battlefield. When attacking an objective, a machine gunner can attract attention suppress enemy positions, and help roll out the red carpet for his allies. While defending an objective, this class can pin down attackers and hold out indefinitely with squad support. To achieve either of these results, the MG must suppress wisely. Using a machine gun in full auto is situational, not the default. Sending a full 80 rounds down range when three short bursts of 10 would do the trick is a waste of ammo, and a great way to reveal your location to the enemy. Speaking of locations, to properly support your squad, an MG must take care when choosing a location to set up. A good practice is selecting a nest right on or 100 to 150 feet behind the main line. From a distance, machine guns will have a slight damage reduction, but positioning yourself further back will allow you to be a smaller target for rifles and marksmen. The rifleman working with you can act as close range protection or as a spotter for the MG. When your nest is inevitably discovered by the enemy, the machine gunner should relocate quickly and quietly. Automatic fire positions are magnets for sniper and armor attention, so moving is necessary to remain effective. An MG is most exposed when moving between positions, so coordinate movements with your partner and avoid engagements until you are reset. Those were the basic responsibilities of playing the machine gunner. Let's look at some tips and tricks that will enhance your experience in Postscriptum. In Postscriptum, good communication is paramount for success. To help encourage communication, all players can use two different voice channels to broadcast their voice to others. The first is local chat. Intended for close quarters communication, local chat allows you to interact with any local teammates, including those in different squads. Limited to about 15 yards, local chat is the best way to communicate with nearby friendlies in combat. To use local chat, up, hold V as in Victor while holding to broadcast. It will appear in blue text at the bottom of your HUD when in use. Next is squad chat. This channel connects you to all other players in your squad, including your squad leader. 
The SL will typically use this chat to give commands, make requests, and keep his squad updated on the battle plan. Use this chat to update your SL or squad members during combat. But be smart. Talking over squad comms incessantly will prevent others from making callouts and could lead to the SL booting you from the squad. To use squad chat, hold B as in Bravo while talking to broadcast. It will appear in green text at the bottom left of your HUD while in use. There is a third channel for voice chat that is only available for leadership positions. To learn more about command chat, check out our squad leader guide once it has been released. Now that we've covered the equipment, responsibilities, and tips and tricks of the MG support class, it's time to wrap up with some final thoughts. With 10 different infantry classes to choose from, many players can be overwhelmed with the roles and responsibilities in Postscriptum. But if you're looking to learn the basics or sharpen your skills with another class, be sure to check out the other parts in our multi-part Postscriptum guide. If you'd like to join us for a game sometime, you can find the link to our Discord server in the description below. On behalf of myself and all of the people involved in this video from the Moron Militia, we thank you for watching and hope to see you again sometime soon. And remember to always drink from your canteen.